Get ready for some tea by making some. I like coffee with my coffee. I'm a no bullshit kind of girl. No room for creamer or that vanilla stuff either. channel my name is Isabel and today I'm bringing you a favorite author of this channel which is one of my favorite authors because this is my channel but you know that Donna Tartt the goldfinch even when it's published in 2013 it is still a book that hunts every popular TBR or favorite book list it was awarded a Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 2014 and I'm here to give you my impression of it so what is this all about? Well, The Goldfinch is a character-driven story, if any other. We meet Theodore, Theo, when he is 13 years old. He just got in trouble in school because he was caught with some cigarettes that weren't his, but whatever they call his mom, and she takes him to the museum to spend the rest of the evening. While they are there in front of this amazing painting of a goldfinch, bam! There is a terrorist attack. Almost everyone and everything is destroyed except Theo and a few people who are going to change his life. But the first step to changing his life forever is going to be how he takes this painting out of the museum with him. With marvelous prose, complex characters, nostalgia for the antique, in settings like New York, Las Vegas, and Amsterdam, Donna Tart brings us a particular coming-of-age story with a first-person narrative that is going to completely hook you in, even if it's just out of curiosity for knowing what happens to the bloody painting, and for so-called Dickinsonian style. So, if this is such a masterpiece, why did I only give it three out of five stars in my wrap-up video? Well, for me, while I was reading this, it looked like I was going to give it four stars as minimum. But then I found some things like the drug abuse, the internalized homophobia, and kind of that misogynist kind of way of portraying women that didn't fly well with me. So I had to deduct a full star. So we landed on three. This, however does not mean that this is a bad book at all. Allow me to explain. Because The Goldfinch is a first person narrative, that means that Theo is our narrator, our filter, and our anchor in this story. However, Theo is an unreliable character and I hate that it took me some chapters to figure this out. He deeply hates himself and he is consumed by guilt which makes him pretty annoying and, at least to me, dislikable. Why is he unreliable, you might wonder? Well, first of all, he is a survivor of a terrorist attack with PTSD who receives no professional psychological help whatsoever. So he is deeply scarred just by that. Then his father is a terrible person who left him and his mother, so he has this abandonment issue and his mother has just died. Second, and probably most important, he was intoxicated the majority of the 700 pages that we are with him. He is either too drunk to function or too drunk to remember what happens properly. I mean, his father is already an alcoholic and he is growing up in this weird environment during his teenage year that allows him to indulge in alcohol and drugs with his friend Boris and pretty much going undetected until his adulthood. This signifies that the narrative that we are given is not a very cohesive one. It feels cohesive because it comes out of memory of Theo telling the story and not in the moment. But still, he is not a trusted source. And for me, I only kept reading not for interest of knowing what happens to Theo, but because of interest of knowing what happens to the painting. Then, this is something I also said in the Sacred History, but it didn't seem as problematic with the enjoyment of the story and everything, so I let it slide. But that I found in this story too, and that it, I do find problematic. And maybe it's because of lack of 
paternal and ma maternal after the accident figured us in his life that he has a lot of internalized homophobia and he represses himself a lot and of course that's why he doesn't analyze how his relationship with his ukrainian friend boris might be more than a friendship we have many pages of homoerotic build up in content with long descriptions of boris body and attitude and etc etc the build up to be something more and again these are from theo's perspective so it's not even the narrator like an external narrator that is begging this time because he wants to be detailed but it's theo who is making this um descriptions and paying all of this attention to boris he gets jealous of his girlfriend and their connection is so intense they go through trauma too together and when they part away they kiss they promise to never forget about each other. They promise to see each other again. And they left an I love you on set. This was all great, of course. I was enjoying so much. And I was like, yes, let them reunite, Donut Heart. But then we are forced into this narrative where all of this is forgotten in adulthood. And Theo is now suddenly in love with Pippa. And now he's completely heterosexual. There are no mentions of Boris as this more than friend person and it's just so annoying. This is really what I dislike. Like, why do you play with me like that? Why do you make this build up for a homoerotic relationship to leave it platonic? And not only platonic, but to leave it forgotten about, unmentioned and unconsequential. It's like, why are you doing this to me, novel? Why? 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 Like, even if you want to pair Theo eventually with a female partner, that doesn't mean that what happened with Boris in Las Vegas was nothing. Like, and also the way that the novel wants to force you to think that Theo is so in love with Pippa and this is the actual endgame or the couple that you should be rooting for is kind of like, huh? They have nothing in common other than they were both in the bombing. And also that's my other problem with this novel is that the representation of females are always in this light of being plain one dimensional characters that are only there to be the objection of Theo's affections without having any actual story. While Peppa's character actually had a very interesting story to like this frustrated musical career and she living in switzerland and then london and all of it for it just to be about theo again this idealization of the female as this fairy full of light that is gonna bring all of that light into this man's dark life is like eh. but again donna Tark couldn't make this character so good and strong and interesting and she just made a manic pixie dream girl and Boris was right there, you know, Boris was right there for if she wanted an actual love story to be in this novel or whatever, but no. All of that sexual tension, all of that sexual tension led to nothing, nothing. It led to uh, no homo, bro. Ugh. And don't come with your pitchforks. I'm aware that some people believe that labeling Theo's and Boris' relationship as queer or that they are queer characters or even suggesting that they are attracted to each other is received as being reductive of their relationship but if that is the case why is Pippa and Theo's relationship not seen as hyperbolic when the only thing that they had in common was being there at the same time of a traumatic, horrible event. As I said, the way females are represented, and I'm not even going to go into details with Kitsy, that is another female character, because it goes along the same lines. The way the homoerotic content was just there and dropped and never acknowledged again, and how it just fell flat into heteronormativity, and how unreliable and troubled Theo is as a main character, makes me give this book three stars out of five now i watched the movie that amazon did adapting this masterpiece of a novel and i must tell you the movie makes me give the novel 
0.5 more. So now we're in 3.5. But why? Okay, our movie still focuses on Theo with him as our main perspective, but because this is a movie and they're not going to do voiceover the whole time, we're not up his head the whole time. This allows us to take some distance and to not be annoyed by him all the time. And we can just see the difference between this cognitive way that he has of seeing reality and the actual reality. Also, the acting is pretty good. The photography was pretty good too. We have big names like Nicole Kidman as um, Mrs. Barber. And then we have promising new actors like Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things and It in the um, portraying young Boris and doing all of this homoerotic content there for us to see, which makes it even more obvious, I think. And all of this just elevates the story that we already have here. That is actually a really good story. A good plot, really well crafted, but that as usual, like with the secret history, the ending wasn't up to it. Also, the movie did a great job, but ending this platonic relationship with Pippa way before the novel actually does, deleting the last um, conversation or moment that happens between Theo and Pippa and decides to end it in this restaurant where they talk about themselves and how they are not going to work. And then the movie drops us directly with Theo and Boris. Who are we actually rooting for? Again, the movie doesn't go as I would have liked it when they acknowledged anything of what happened in the past, but also they couldn't just like change the source material. The movie also deletes some of Theo and Boris' interactions that I personally liked, and it also deletes Boris' um, wife and his girlfriend and his kids, plus some of the scenes that really made uh, Boris and Theo bond like no regular friends would, that would have added to about my argument of the homoerotic content, but I understand that not everyone wanted to portray that. Apparently, Tart also didn't want to go into details with that. So, although that last Amsterdam scene in the movie between Theo and Boris is totally like soulmate material, great connection, great acting, and I could feel the tension. Also, I like the last shot of the movie that goes back to the beginning that gives it this kind of more cyclical feeling that again, I feel was lacking from the ending of the original source. And I think the movie did a great job adapting that to give us something more cohesive. So even with those issues I personally had with The Goldfinch, I completely recommend it to you. Solid novel with a great buildup and a not so spectacular ending. But maybe if you like those type of endings when the characters are just kind of like floating around and they're not decisive of what's happening at the end, maybe you would like that. Again, if you are more into character-driven focused stories uh, other than like more plot-driven stories, I would recommend The Goldfinch for you instead of The Secret History. Or maybe if you didn't like The Secret History but you like the style of writing, maybe you should check this out. It is all about personal preference. Who knows, maybe it's not Donna Tartt's forte to write the type of ending I particularly like, but that doesn't mean that the novel is not going to be enjoyable for you. The Goldfinch is a deep dive into Theo's psyche, his consciousness, his guilt, his coming of age and his growing up, severe self-repression of homosexual tendencies, and just a lot of descriptions about antique furniture. If you have read The Goldfinch or you're just interested in the story or you want to watch the movie or you already watched the movie, I'm very interested in your opinions and I would love to see them in the comments down below. Again, I recommend the movie, I recommend the book. This is just my opinion and I wanted to express them with you. Also, I think that you can watch the movie in Amazon Prime if you have the subscription already. It should be free. Why? Because I think the movie portrays the novel's strongest assets and kind of strips away from the weakest points I found. That is all for me. This is my opinion. Even if you don't agree with me, subscribe regardless because debate is enriching and exhilarating but just keep it respectful. I believe Donna Tartt is an extraordinary writer 
that I love. I think she has a great voice and a great talent. Leave me a comment down below with anything that floats your boat. Keep reading and when you're not, follow me on all my social media link down below. Remember that I stream on Twitch each Sunday, that we are reading Middle March, and that you can find me in Twitter tweeting about Hosea or just an Instagram posting stories. Okay, bye!